something other than zero, you would just change the mu. Okay. You'd have to be careful with that too because then your hypothesis is whether it's this exact score that you're hypothesizing or greater than or less than. So you'd have to be careful with your conclusions. They're not as clear. Okay. So question five. Suppose we wish to determine if there tends to be a difference in number of tomatoes eaten by deer. To qu answer this question, we need to test the hypothesis or the null mu 2 minus mu 1 equals 0, or the alternative, they're not equal to 0. What is the value of the two sample t statistic? So like negative 4. Not negative. How did you get there? Uh, oh, I did. I subtracted backwards. So I did 10.5 minus 15. So, okay, so what is the formula for so this? Is x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1 divided by the square root of um, s2, well, the s1 squared over n plus s2 squared over n. So x2 is 15, x1 is 10.5 over the square root standard. Um, the variance, which would be s1 is 3 squared over 15 plus 2.5 squared over 15. And if we solve this out, you're right, we get something around 4.46. So before we even look it up, we know, because this is a number that's a lot bigger than 2, and we probably will reject the null at an alpha equals 0.05 level. But let's look it up and find out what our p-value, or yeah, what our p-value is exactly. So what can we say about the p-value? Do we reject or accept the null hypothesis? So how many degrees of freedom do we have? 14. 14. The biggest it has is 4.14. So it's less than 0.5. Yeah, so it's much less than. So p is less than 0 0.001. That's how we would write it when it's like very small. But we have to do something to this. But would we say because in this table the smallest value is 0 0.005, 0 0.005 right? 7.005, right? How many zeros are there? And there's three, three, three zeros. zeros. We have to do something <coughs> to this. Did we ask a one sided yeah, hypothesis or a two sided hypothesis? One tail to two tail. So we have to multiply this by two because our values in the table, and as you see, shaded into the curve is one-sided. So we would do p times 2. It's still very, very small. And we'd still conclude that the number of tomatoes are different, that citrus grows more tomatoes than deer off, or prevents tomatoes from uh, being eaten by deer. Any questions? Is there a question that can be asked that you would have to do, like, using all 30 of the plants, and do a calculation with, like, 29 degrees of freedom? 
Like, I know this is comparing one group versus the other, but with this information, can you make a question that you'd have to combine or not really? Not particularly. I'm trying to think about not um, non-parametric tests mm -hmm. where you would rank them. Mm -hmm. That might be a case where you use all the Dewey Freedom. I'm not sure. But we wouldn't have to worry. No. Okay. If these were like two different, if one of them had like 20 and the other one had like 10, it would just be 9 degrees of freedom yeah. then, right? Okay. What assumptions are we making about <coughs> the slida when we're doing these tests? That's normal. That's normal. Normal. Yeah. So we're, we're not testing normality here. Uh, that's usually done with software. It's harder to do by hand. So we're just going to make the assumption mm -hmm. for, okay. for our exam that all the data that's given to you is normally distributed. Otherwise, we're making an assumption and it might be wrong. We might need to use a more robust test, especially with our ends being so tiny. Remember we talked about like how many, how much, how many people, how many subjects we need in order to be safe in assuming normality, even if our data might not be normal like 40-ish. When we get into like four, like the 40 range, we're safe. <coughs> and you'll hear different numbers depending on who's teaching the class, what <coughs> background they're coming from, <coughs> lots of different uh, specialties. <coughs> Econ, psych have different values that they'll accept as enough to assume normality. But we always want to test it when we have software, even if we have a large number. Okay, so using the following uh, answer questions 7 to 12, the builder is interested in the average maximum distance at which people living in apartment A can hear the wild cart college parties in apartment B. The building manager for apartment A claims it is at at least 500 meters. 20 randomly selected apartment dwellers are asked at what distance they can hear the festivities. The average maximum distance in meters of these 20 dwellers is 540 meters, with a standard deviation of 55 meters. The builder wishes to use these data to test if the mean maximum distance at which people hear the parties is greater than 500 meters at a significance level of alpha equals 0.05. So before we go on, what do we think, which test are we going to use? It's just a one sample. It's a one sample, right? So there's no before and after. There's no treatment. It's just uh, we're comparing a one sam one sample to a hypothesis a hypothesized test value. In this case, 500. So what are the hypotheses that the highway safety researcher which wishes to test? U equals 500. Or so the no, yeah. Greater. So our null is mu is equal to 500, 500. and our al alternate is that it's greater. Mu is greater than 500. What is the chance that the builder will falsely accept the claim that the average maximum distance at which tenants can hear at the parties is more than 500 meters? This is going back to our last third of the class. Or 5%, right? There's yeah. a 5% yeah. chance. What kind of error is this? Does that make sense? So we've set our alpha at 0.05, right? That means we have a 5% chance mm -hmm. of falsely accepting the alternative. Okay. So we're doing a one sample T test. So what is our formula for T, for finding T? 
Yep, so let's plug and chuck. X bar is? 540. 540. Our mu that we want to test? 500. 500. Our standard deviation? 55. And our N is? 20. 20. So what can we say about the value of P? We guess that it likely is significant, right? Because our T is greater than 2. Mm -hmm. So we want to find out exactly. So we have to look up T for 3.25 and how many degrees of freedom? 19. 19. And we have a uh, one-sided or two-sided hypothesis? One-sided hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to multiply our p-value. We're just going to take what's in the back of the book. So we conclude that p is less than point, what was it, 0.001? It was like between 0.001 and 0.025. Somewhere like that. We can include it's less than 0 0.05. We reject our null. But is it? It's one sided, right? It's one sided. If, in fact, the true average distance at which tenants could hear the party was less than 500 meters, what type of error would the builder have committed given the above results? I'm just confused because 3.25 is between 0.025 and 0.01, so wouldn't it be greater than 0.01, but less than 0.025? You can do it that way. It's then 0.025. Um, to be more conservative. It's type one error. You said oh because why is it a type one error? Because we we falsely rejected the null. Right. So we falsely accepted the alternative. Do you automatically accept the alternative? Just because you rejected. No, it depends on your hypothesis. So you have to look again at your alternative. Okay, but in this case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So it's type 1 because we rejected the null, but it was type 1 already anyway, though, right? Because of the alpha. That was asking what the. Yep. Was here. Question 8 was at asking what chance. It was a chance. Okay. Five percent because we set alpha at 0.05. Okay. But if we <coughs> we can act, if we could actually hear the party, so we falsely rejected the null, right? What type of error is that? Type one. Type one. one. But like, what if the what if it was like 400 meters? Right, that would be... Then you wouldn't accept the alternative. Because the alternative that it was less than... We'd have to test 400 meters. Okay. Here. Okay. Does that make sense? Can we move on? So these are important. These type of questions are definitely going to be on your exam. Um, so 13 through 15, you're given a snippet of uh, a description of a study, and you're asked.